Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope that y'all are doing great. I hope you had an awesome Labor Day. I am still... I was trying to do a live on YouTube, and it let me set it up last night. I thought it was going to let me do it, but it wouldn't let me do it. So, I have to upload my video again. I'm going to do some research and try to figure it out. But anyway, I hope y'all had an awesome Labor Day. Uh, we are going to do Psalm 14 today. And uh, first of all, we're going to pray. My desk is such a mess. I did not get that done, but I have a praise. I got Seth's stuff set up for tomorrow, so I'm ready. I got to get up early. So, so I can get done because I have two things that I have to do tomorrow in Walnut Springs. So anyway, it's going to be an interesting day. All right, well, let's pray. Let's go before God's throne and pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just pray, God, that you would... Um, Help us to uh, seek your face more every day. And we thank you, God, because you are on your throne and you are in control. And you are, you have a plan and purpose for everyone and for everything, God. We just need to trust you. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, you are amazing and magnificent and powerful. And God, you are the righteous judge that will avenge all unrighteousness. And uh, But yet you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate. And you are faithful, God. You are trustworthy, God. You are patient because you want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that they would, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to return, God. We just pray for them to see where they are and to return to you and to repent and to be one with you again, God, to have a better relationship than ever. God, we pray for all the all the disasters that are going on today, God, and have been going on. We just pray that these people that are in the midst of these disasters, that their needs would be met, God that people would come alongside them and show them the loving compassion of Jesus and show them the hands and feet of Jesus in their care and in their bringing them things that they need. God, we pray for the people in Afghanistan. We just pray for safety for them. We also pray, God, and we are hearing stories, God, of miraculous things that are happening over there that people are being able to be brought out. And God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We pray that you will continue to remove obstacles, that you will continue, continue to make a way for them in the desert, God. And God, we just uh, praise you and thank you. We lift up people that are sick today, God. We just pray that you would heal them, that you would touch them in a very special way. If they have not been close to you, God, that during this time they would be drawn to you. And uh, we just pray for their families, that you would give them strength also. I want to thank you for healing the people that I was praying for last year, last week, God. I just give you all the glory, honor, and praise for that. And uh, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. God, just open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us in your word 
tonight and remove me. Just let me be a willing vessel that is willing to share whatever the Holy Spirit wants lays on my heart. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I am a little disappointed, but I don't know. I'll figure it out. I think I have to get a company to stream through. And I just don't know if I want to do that. It's just another expense that I don't really know if it's worth the extra expense when I can upload these when I get done. It's about the same thing. I do like the chatting in the chats, though. I like that, and I was looking forward to that. So I'm going to see what I can find to do that. Okay, so Psalm 14. We read Psalm 13 last night. Psalm 14, folly of the godless and God's final triumph. To the chief musician, a Psalm of David. So this again is David. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. How many people do you know right now that are saying there is no God? That's just scary. I would not say that. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. None of them. None of these people that say there is no God. There is none that do good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. So he is looking down to see. Okay. Is she following me? Is he following me? You know, because he wants to know. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge. Who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call on the Lord. There they are in great fear, for God is with the generation of the righteous. God is with the generation of the righteous. We are the righteous. God is with us. God is going to protect us. I lost my place. Shame the counsel of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and all Israel be glad. So again, talking about the good versus the evil. And so my husband and I were having a talk today about that. God sends us here on this earth to learn how to love him with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, to love others, and to accept Jesus as our Lord and follow Jesus. We have to follow Jesus back to God. So that is why we're here. If you want to know why we're here, you're here to learn to love God and love others and to accept Jesus. Accept the path of Jesus. There's only two paths. There is a sinful path that leads to hell. And then there is a righteous path that leads to God. And Jesus is on that righteous path. And it is not very wide. And there aren't a lot of people on it. But Jesus is on it. I'm following Jesus back to God. Jesus is my shepherd. Well, let's see what the study part of this says. The foolish individual lacks spiritual discernment. That's another thing I was talking about this morning with my husband. If you're not walking in the spirit, you don't have that spiritual discernment. You have the opposite of the spiritual discernment. You don't have any discernment. There's like everything goes. But if you're walking in the Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, 
he is not going to let you stay in sin for very long. You're going to start being so miserable. It's just not even going to be worth it. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He convicts us. Not intelligence denying the existence of God and living as if God did not exist. The opposite of folly or foolishness in the Old Testament is not intelligence, but rather steadfast devotion to the Lord. So God doesn't care how intelligent we are, how book smart we are, how many degrees, how many PhDs. God doesn't care about that. He wants us to be steadfast, to have steadfast devotion to the Lord. Paul's use of Psalm 14 emphasizes that we are all foolish as long as we choose to separate ourselves from the wisdom of God found in the gospel of Christ. So that concludes my study part. We might talk about that tomorrow night. Let's see, what in addition do we want? read. Oh, I know. I'm not sure if I can find it right off the bat, but I just thought about it. The wise man and the foolish man. I'm not real sure where it is. My reading this morning on version was the feeding of 5,000, which I thought that is so good. Uh, what I was looking for of oh, the wise man and the foolish man. Well, I'm going to have to look up here at the back. Rather than going all through the all through the gospel. Not sure where it is. And I read it not too long ago. I read it to y'all not too long ago, but I think that goes along with what we have been studying about the righteous and the unrighteous. Looking for wise, maybe I should have just looked for um, wise. That's right. Let's go look for foolish then. Hmm. Well, I can't find it. See if the Holy Spirit will take me to it. I thought it was in Matthew. Let's look in John. This is actually Luke. Oh, maybe I need to be. Lost son, rich man and Lazarus. Okay, well let's let's read the rich man and Lazarus, and I'll try to find it when we get to morning up. <clears throat> because that goes with righteous and unrighteous also. The rich man and Lazarus. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple, in fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died 
and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all of this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one, the one rise from the dead. Well, that was a good story, too. Because just because people think they are righteous, they may or may not be. So I want to read something else. I just remembered that God told me to read this today. My sweet friend, I need to put a label on the back. A sweet friend that's in heaven gave this to me last year in 2020 on my birthday. And she brought me a coffee pot too. No, that was just, she just brought me a coffee pot for no reason. But she brought me this on my birthday. And I thought, why'd she bring this to me? So months later, I thought, well, I'm going to read this. I think I read it that day, but I really wasn't paying attention. I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes we're just not paying attention and we're just not thinking when we read. But this is so beautiful. And this is how I feel about being a Christian. I am not perfect. I will never be perfect until I step into heaven in that perfected body because I'm human. So don't ever think that I act like I am holier than thou because I am not. I make mistakes. I have to ask for forgiveness too, just like anybody else. So this says, when I say I am a Christian, when I say I am a Christian, I am not shouting, I am saved. I'm whispering, I get lost. That is why I chose this way. When I say I am a Christian, I do not speak of this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need someone to be my guide. When I say I am a Christian, I am not trying to be strong. I am professing that I am weak and pray for strength to carry on. When I say I am a Christian, I am not bragging of success. I am admitting I have failed and cannot ever pay the debt. When I say I am a Christian, I am not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartaches, which is why I seek his name. When I say I am a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I have no authority. I only know I'm loved. Isn't that beautiful? 
and the author is unknown. I don't know whether she wrote it or not. He did like to write things, like me. I like to write poetry and um, lessons and stuff, so she might have written it. I don't know, but I think it's how we should feel as Christians, that we are not perfect, that we will never be perfect. A light shiny thing on my nose. <laughs> oh my! On my other camera, on my Facebook camera. This camera's pretty good. I, I went back to the default settings and my hair still looks red, but it's not as bad as it was. All right. Well, it is time to offer salvation to someone. And I'm going to use this really short one. <clears throat> I need to go wake up my child who's fallen asleep in front of the TV. And... Uh, his dinner ready. Do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth, John 10:10, 10, 10, and he wants you to spend eternity with him, 2 Peter 3, 9. To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a savior. <clears throat> We've all disobeyed God. We've sinned and earned separation from God, which is death. Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23 No matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven. That rich man thought that because he was rich that he could work his way into heaven. But... <clears throat> He might have been rich, but he wasn't kind. If he was kind, he would have given Lazarus a place at his table to eat instead of him eating crumbs from his table. So we can't work our way into heaven, no matter how nice or how good or how rich or how whatever we think we are, we cannot work our way into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Believe in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 um, Commit your life to Christ. A, B, C. Commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is a very short prayer, very short. But if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior and you're looking for a Short way to do it. This is a way to do it. So, Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust you alone for eternal life. Jesus name I pray amen so if you said this prayer if you invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life then welcome to the kingdom family of God the angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life you are now saved sealed and sanctified by God through Jesus his son and if you want to grow closer to Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, then read God's Word. Follow God's Word. And pray. Pray to God every day. And find you some praise music.
pray to God to send you to a church that preaches and teaches out of the Bible and follow up with baptism. It is just a symbol, but Jesus did it as a symbol for us and we are to do it also. So it is time to do the blessing in numbers. And it's time for me to get off of here. I haven't been on here for very long. But I'm a little frustrated with YouTube. I'm going to go see if I can do some more research on that. And if I have to buy something or do another monthly payment, I'm not doing it. Okay, so number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So I don't know where my friend Josie is. I'm going to reach out to her tonight. And maybe some of my other friends. I have a sick friend. And um, I'm going to reach out to some people. I was going to do it today, but I got busy in Seth's room. And I'm glad, though, that tomorrow everything's done. I reorganized his room where it'll be easier to transition him from one place to another. And uh, it's going to be a good school year. I'm going to do a lot of it on the on uh, my old computer. This is a new computer for him. It's a little slow. I worked with it today, and I'm like, oh, this is slow. But if he does well, I'll just get him a better computer. So I don't want to buy him one if he's not even going to do it. All right. Well, let's pray. I'm going to pray for my friend Josie. I haven't seen her. I miss her out to her tonight. God, we just come to you, God, and we just just lift up Josie and Austin to you. I just pray that you would heal their bodies, God. I pray that you would give them more and more strength every day. I think what is so hard about this disease is that it just leaves you drained. God, I pray the same for my daughter, that you would just give her strength, God. Help her to get through today, which is always a hard day. And we just pray. We pray, God, for um, we pray for the other people that I know that are sick. God, I just pray for healing for them. It would be with their families. I just want to pray for Josie's sisters and brothers and her children and their families, God, that you would just give them, you would just protect them, that you would provide for them, that you would bless them, that you would be with them, that they would feel your presence, God. God, I pray for all the people in Afghanistan, that you would hide them, and that you would protect them, God, that you would surround them with your angels, and that you would remove the obstacles that are keeping them from getting back to America. Many American citizens, uh, many people that helped us, that we promised them a place in the United States for their help. Because in their country, they're traitors. So God, please protect them. And we just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out and share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus unashamedly. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I pray and share warriors. Have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow. This is already Tuesday. I still have my August calendar up. I need to flip it into this next month. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.